fellow makers of awesome, Danny here with Privateer Press. Today we're going to look at a simple solution for creating stone walls to use in your game. Let's get started. Today, I'll be showing you how to make a field stone wall using readily available materials and tools. When you start a project like this, you want to think about it as broadly as possible and then work your way further and further into more detail as you continue. For this project, I use pink insulation foam that's available at most hardware supply stores. Uh, this was cut from a piece of one inch thick foam using my P3 hobby knife. Other tools that I will be using include a pencil eraser and a ballpoint pen, and to smooth out some surfaces, I have this uh, folded piece of 320 grit sandpaper. So let's get started making a mess. I start by taking a ballpoint pen and drawing out certain bricks. It's really important to make sure that you don't press too hard. If you press too hard, you're going to tear into the foam and create really gross grooves that are hard to get out in the future. You want to lightly press and that will create the indentation of the bricks that you're going to try to create on this wall. You want to try to vary the size of these bricks so that it doesn't look like it was laid up by a masonry worker and that it was mostly field stones that they have placed to create this sort of rock wall. It'll make it look a lot more natural in the end than just a piece of brick. Again, you can see I'm starting to break up some of these forms. They don't all have to be in a line. Uh, sometimes you can have really small bricks like you see here and then these thicker or thinner, long length ones. You, and you also don't have to be super precise at this point. You just want it to look visually interesting. And just make sure that you carry the line all the way to the edge because that's how we're gonna find where to start next on the other side. And I'll take it, I'll carry this over. You also don't want too many of your vertical lines to match up because uh, physically that wouldn't be able to balance and stay. Uh, it would tumble over. You want to stagger your bricks. Just make it cool, man. So now I've carried these stones over to the side, and that tells me where to start on my other side. So you can see now that I have carried that stone texture throughout the entire piece of foam. Uh, I went pretty quickly and I didn't care too much at that stage about uh, how sloppy some of the lines might be because we're gonna go in and push them and pull some of them out and carve them back. So now we're gonna go in with our uh, number two pencil uh, and we're gonna take the eraser. The eraser is flexible and it almost acts like a small finger. Get into small places. Uh, and we're gonna go in and we're gonna push some of these bricks in. And we use an eraser because it's soft enough that it doesn't just tear into the foam, it just lightly pushes some of those bricks in. Uh, it doesn't distort the shape that much. And if it does, that's okay, because we're still gonna carve it back later. And so this is one of my favorite parts, because it, it can add just a lot of character to this wall. Uh, you can make walls look like they're crumbling or falling apart, depending on what areas you push in and what areas you add emphasis to. You don't have to use the same amount of pressure uh, with your eraser each time. In fact, I would encourage you to not. Uh, you really want to push certain bricks in further than others. Uh, tell a story with it. Um, this, I want it to look like they, they had these rough hewn, semi, you know, square bricks, but they don't all fit super well together. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time to really push some in further than others. So at this point, I think we're good. I think that our wall doesn't look too static, doesn't look too manufactured. It has a little bit of life to it and a, a lot more depth than we had before uh, when it was just lines on a uh, rectangular piece of foam. So now, it's my favorite part, I'm going to take our uh, P3 hobby knife and um, be careful, but we're going to go in we're gonna start to relieve some edges. Really add a lot of character to this stone wall. You can see I'm working my way right up to where I pushed in with the pen. So I always try to go in at an angle and then cut straight down to remove these triangular pieces of foam. This creates that rounded and weathered look on your stone 
and also gives you a chance to go in and clean up some of your edges that might be a little more sloppy and wobbly because it's sometimes hard to draw on them with your ballpoint pen and keep it straight and clean. So we can carve that in later with our knife and add a lot more depth to our wall. Also at this point, if I see any weird scratches or uh, cut marks that I don't like, I'll go in with my sandpaper. You can see I've got these strange ridges uh, from when I um, cut the initial piece of foam and I'll, I'll kind of try to remove those and clean those up, as well as uh, a few of these cut marks that we'll make, we'll wanna, we'll wanna soften them. Because you wanna add that, that range of detail. Some edges will be extremely sharp where they broke recently, and some will have been left in the rain or, or in the desert in the sand and been weathered down over time, and they'll be a lot more soft and round. And that's kind of the, uh, the fun for me when making terrain is to think about uh, what part of the universe is this, this is taking place in, and what would the environment be, and how does that determine how I carve and design some of my terrain. I might even, in a few spots, completely remove a brick. In fact, I do recommend that because it really adds a lot more, I keep using the same word, but a lot more character, um, character to your wall. Then we'll go in later and we'll make it look like that stone actually broke off of your wall. We'll show you how to kind of do a little bit of battle damage or weather damage there. So now that I'm all done with carving in my heavy weathering, I'm going to take my sandpaper. Again, it's like 320 or 400 grit. You don't want anything too coarse because it'll tear up your foam. I'm gonna go in and just soften some of these edges in a few spots. Kind of like what we were talking about where you want those differing levels of detail, differing levels of sharpness, that will pull out with your paint, All right? So you go in, you'll soften some of these things, maybe go in and relieve some edges a little further with the edge of your, uh, your sandpaper. Maybe soften up that corner there. All right, so I'm okay with how that looks. Uh, now, where we removed those rocks previously, we're gonna make them, we wanna make our wall look like those stones broke out. So I'm gonna take my hobby knife, I'm gonna pull some real big gashes out of it, you know, real triangular kind of cuts and slashes. Really get in there and add some, uh, add some damage and, and trauma to that stone. And I'll go in and take my sandpaper in a few spots where it's really just too rough and sloppy and, and try to smooth that out. Now, something to keep in mind with this foam is uh, you don't want to use black spray primer with it because it, uh, it will melt it. So you just want to use your normal water-based paint, you know, some thinned out Thamar Black. Will do just fine. So here we are. And you can see I'm pretty happy with uh, most of the level of detail here. And for our final stage, we're gonna go in and just add some sand and ballast in a few places to just uh, give yourself a little bit more detail to pop out when you paint it. So here I have two different grits of ballast, uh, and I use these at different points. I always lay down my thicker ballast first, because uh, that takes up the most space, and I can really see where it goes and remove it if I put too much on. So I'm gonna take our uh, P3 mixing medium here, squeeze a little bit out here, and I'll use an old uh, hobby brush and laying around, and I'll just apply it into some of these crevices, right? And you're gonna, what we're doing here is uh, creating the breakage, you know, that slight breakage from where that wall crumbled. Uh, so we're gonna lay down this mixing medium and then we'll throw these, you know, soft, fine stones throughout here. And it'll really help create that illusion that this is old, 
weathered and some of these bricks have fallen out over time. Uh, also in a few places where you might have a deep crack, like here, I'll add a little bit of that fine ballast. Just give, uh, give ourselves something else to, to pull out with our paint. Here's a good example. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna start with our, uh, with our coarser ballast. Just lay a few of them in there. Right. Be like one right there, just a few in there. Just really, you don't need to do a lot with this. Just trying to create some bigger stones that haven't quite broken apart yet. Now we're gonna take our, our fine ballast, really just sprinkle that on in a few places, um, where you know you wanna make sure that it wouldn't land, or that it doesn't land in a place where it wouldn't be able to stay. Like, so you don't want it to crawl up the side of that, of that stone. Just trying to get a little bit, little bit more detail in there. Blow that off, a little bit more right here. At this point, you know, look at it. You can also remove some of it with your brush if you don't like where it's landing. But at this point, you're gonna just take a look at it, see how you like it, see if you wanna add a little bit more. Like I think a little bit of fine ballast in this groove would look really nice. Kind of pop out with some paint. Just add a little bit. And there you have it. I mean, I think that's gonna paint up really nicely. You can see we've got a bunch of different levels of detail. We've got a bunch of different edges, some soft, some very sharp. All these things will, will pop out and push uh, with how we paint it. This is what it looks like all painted. Now you have a quick technique that you can use in a bunch of different ways to make whatever type of rock wall your heart desires for your table. Our wall looks great and is ready to add cover and visual interest on our table. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the links below for more in this series and additional information on the P3 Hobby Line. His name is Danny and he came to say he's gonna help you make walls in a visual way.